Now, if something's repeated to you 200 times, what does that emphasize? Two things mainly. Huh? Huh? It's important. It's important, right? Right? Your wife calls you, don't forget to pick it up. She calls you back again, don't forget to pick it up. She calls you like 50 times and sends you a text message, once on your phone, once on WhatsApp. She'll even send you an email, mashallah. Don't forget to pick it up. Why? Because it's important. Why does she have to send me on all these different platforms? Not only because it's important, because? Because we forget so much. So because it's important, and it's because we forget. Right? We forget. When we talk about taqwa, the scholars have come up with many different definitions of the word taqwa. Why is it important to understand the definition of taqwa first? Huh? I'm asking you questions now. This is, this is, I'm doing this on purpose. Huh? Sorry? Be, so you can attain it. If you don't know what you're striving for, you don't understand it, then nine times out of ten, guess what? You're not going to reach it. You're not going to reach it. So by defining taqwa, we're putting it in front of us like an objective and we're understanding every dimension of it. And this is what I'm going to do for the next five to ten minutes, inshallah. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahimahullah, he gives a very nice definition. He says, At-taqwa, an taj'al baynaka wa bayna adab allahi wiqaya bi fa'l al-awamir wa tark al-nawahi. To put before you and the punishment and the adab of Allah a protection. Now, how do you put protection? Bi fa'l al-awamir wa tark al-nawahi. By doing good deeds, like coming here tonight, in this weather, mashallah, where everybody's, you know, locked up at home, maybe watching Netflix, you guys decide to come to the masjid. Hmm? That's good deed. Bifa'ad al-awamr. Right? You're obeying Allah. You're doing what He commands you to do. What tark nawahi It's not only doing what He tells you to do, but staying away from that which He has told you to, what? Not do. Very good. Right? Now, think about it like a wall. Every time you do a good deed, you put a brick down. A brick. Right? Now you're trying to build a great wall of China. You gotta protect yourself from the adab of Allah. Brick by brick. You do a good deed, brick. You do another good deed, brick, 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 brick. Then you do a bad deed, guess what? You have to take that brick out. And at the end of the day, when you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're gonna have your wall of taqwa. If that wall is strong and sturdy because you did fi'al al-awamr wa tark al-nawahi, then you're good. That's your protection. But if not, then you're leaving yourself in a vulnerable position. Right? You, you, would you build a house with, you know, missing bricks? Would you feel safe living in that home? You wouldn't feel safe living in that home. That's why when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to make sure that our wall of protection is sturdy, is strong, and it can protect us. So that's the definition of taqwa. Actually, Umar radiallahu an, he asks Ubay bin Ka'ab radiallahu an, what is taqwa? Do you think Umar didn't know what taqwa was for him to ask Ubay? At the time, he was Amir al Mu'minin. You think Amir al Mu'minin doesn't know what taqwa is? Do you think he knows? He knows. Why is he asking Ubay radiallahu an? But Ubay was known to be knowledgeable. Ubay was known to be a scholar. There's no need to question his, his knowledge. Ubay was known for his ilm. Radiallahu anhu. Huh? Reminding. Maybe reminding himself. That's very good. Or maybe trying to find a different, what? Definition. Not definition, but perspective. A different perspective. Right? And then he gives him an analogy. And this is from the, yani, subhanallah, from his knowledge, but you can tell that he was a student of the Prophet ﷺ. Because the Prophet ﷺ, one of his greatest ways, one of his means of, of educating the Ummah was by presenting uh, 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 analogies. He said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, have you ever <clears throat> traversed a path that was full of thorns and obstacles? 
He said, of course. He said, what did you do? We know the hadith. What would you do? You'd lift your garment up and you would take every step very, what? Carefully. Now when you leave your house every day, when you leave your home, no matter you know, how nice of a day it is, no matter how you know, clean the streets are, no snow, you have to understand that you're traversing a very dangerous path. And if you don't put in your mind the moment you leave your house that you are going to be traversing this path, then guess what's going to happen? You're going to be hurt. You're going to be afflicted by the hardships and the trials and the fitna that you see. Therefore, every day when you step out of your home, you have to lift your garment up. Not literally, but figuratively. And you have to make sure that everything that you say, and everything that you hear, and every place that you go, <coughs> is not going to cause harm to you. That is what taqwa is. If you have that mentality, when you leave your home, إِنَّ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ مَفَاسَةً very easy, very easy. Like, I'll end my small reminder with the athar of Ali radiallahu an. Ali, he was asked, what is taqwa? And he defined it very beautifully. Four things. How many? Four. Five? Four. Four. He said, at taqwa, four things. Number one, al-khawfu min al-jaleel. To be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the fear that we have for Allah is a very specific type of fear. And it's not like the fear that we have for our enemies, right? Or those who can afflict harm upon us. Because that type of fear, what it does, it builds animosity towards you and that individual or that thing. Correct? The last thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to do is for you to have the feeling of animosity towards Him. Now, what type of fear are we talking about? Like a child, he fears his mother or father. And he fears his mother and father not because he's afraid he's going to get a spanking when he comes home or he's going to be grounded. Those are things that might be running in his mind. But if he's a good boy and a good girl, they're going to say, I let my father or my mother down. And that's what they fear. Like when your kid comes home with a bad report card, yeah, they're going to be afraid that, you know, there's going to be some uh, repercussions. But believe me, a good kid, he fears most because he knows that his mother wakes up in the morning, makes the lunch, drives him halfway across the city to the school, and he's coming back with a Ta'ban report card. He's gonna feel what? He's gonna feel guilty. That's what he fears. He fears upsetting his parents. Similarly, we should fear upsetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created you, the one who takes care of you, the one who gives you everything that you need, when you want it, how you want it. This is all from Allah. And we must fear disappointing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day that we meet Him. We must fear that. We must fear that. So that is a quality of what? Taqwa. To fear, to disappoint Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is Malik al-Muluk. He is the King of all kings. He then goes on to say, وَالْعَمَلُ بِالْتَنْزِيلِ This is number two. What number is this? Two. وَالْعَمَلُ بِالْتَنْزِيلِ What is tanzil here? What is tanzil? Quran. Quran, no? There's something else. Huh? Sunnah. Sunnah. Tanzil is Quran and Sunnah. Because what the Prophet said, this was not out of his own desire. It is wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, Amalu bit tanzil. Keyword amal. A sign of your taqwa is that you're a doer. 
The people who do things that is a sign of their taqwa, according to the Qur'an and according to the Sunnah. We don't pray the way that we want to pray, but rather we pray the way the Prophet ﷺ prayed because he said, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Pray the way you see me pray. And because the Qur'an says, wa aqimus salah. So you fulfill those commands. That is a sign of taqwa. Mafhum al-mukhalafa. Mafhum al-mukhalafa. If you if you do these things, then you are what? From amongst al-muttaqun. Inna lil-muttaqin mafaza. Mafhum al-mukhalafa. If you don't do these things, then you become what? What is the opposite of yani, to be victorious and successful? Loser. loser. There you go. Have you ever been called a loser before? Yes. Yeah, and there's no bigger loser than the loser on the day of judgment. Right? There's no bigger loser than the loser on the day of judgment. So that's number two. I'm going to ask you about these four, so you better memorize them. We're already on number three. So remember them. I'm going to ask you. وَالْقَنَاعَةُ بِالْقَلِيلِ To be happy and, you know, content with the little that you have. Now, if you have clothes on your back, and you have a house over your head, and you have a little bit of food in your refrigerator, then wallahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala faddalaka ala al-alameen. He gave you more than he has given many. But if we don't recognize this, then where's the shukr of towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Concept of being grateful to Allah is not about how much you have, but it's about recognizing what little you do. And a little is a lot. Right? That's why the Prophet who said, when you're looking at your iman, you look at those who are above you. Right? Someone who doesn't pray, you don't compare yourself with someone who doesn't pray. Like, well, alhamdulillah, I pray, and I come to the musalla, and I do this, and this guy doesn't even show up, so I'm content. You look at the one above you, the one who's making the adhan, the one who's in the saf, first row, every salah. That's the one you are you know, competing against. But when it comes to the things that you have in your life, you don't look at those above you. And that's the mistake that we do. We go on Facebook, we go on YouTube, we go on Instagram, and all we see are these things. And we look at these people's lives that are fake, and then we say, oh, we don't have anything in our lives, and then we become, you know, we're no longer content with what we have. Right? This is a trick of the shaitan. So he says, don't look at those on Instagram, don't look at those, but look at those who are suffering. Look at those in Yemen. And look at those in these third world countries that have no food, no electricity, you know, no safety. And you forget about food. You can live without food. You can struggle. You can thug it out. You can go through it. Water, yes, okay, you can push through it. But to live in fear, to live in fear, that's difficult. That is very difficult. We've never even thought about that. We go home, we leave our doors open, our kids, they go out, they play till, you know, midnight, they come back home, we're okay. These are things that we must be grateful for. That is a sign of what? Taqwa. To be grateful for the little things that you have. Last but not least, وَالْإِسْتِعْدَادْ لِيَوْمِ rahil. To be prepared and preparing yourself for your final trip. No. Now, if you want to go to, let's go to Mexico. You guys want to go to Mexico or you want to go to Hawaii? Hawaii. You want to go to Hawaii? Hawaii, okay, wins. Hawaii wins. Type. Let's go to Hawaii. Type. What do we got to do? We got to go and what? Pack. We got to go pack, man. I got to go get luggage, right? Then what else do I got to do? I never traveled before, so what do I got to go do? I got to get a ticket, very good. I got to go buy a ticket. Huh? Passports too. I got to go to the Harry Hayes and I got to stand in line. Right? I got to take a number and sit down and wait. 
Does this take time? All of this, does it take time? It takes time, right? Because I'm going on a, on a journey. How long are we going to go to Hawaii for? No, not two days. Yeah, akhi, don't be bakhir on yourself. Yeah, akhi. One month. One month. One month, yeah, akhi, that's israf, yeah, akhi. Come on, this deen is about wasatiya. A year. Like, wallahi hadik. One week. Khalas. You're not paying for it, yeah, akhi, we are. One week. One week. So we're going on a trip for one week and it takes us all this time to prepare for just a trip for what? One week. One week. Right? Akhirah is forever. Akhirah is forever. And it's a trip that you're going to take. We all have different departure dates. And we're all going to fly, you know, different routes. Go through with different airlines. But at the end of the day, we're going to take that rihla. You're going to go on it. Right? How do you feel when you show up to your, to your you, you, you fly like 24 hours, it takes a full day. We used to do this when we come back. Sheikh Hassan would know. Right? Going back and forth, flying, you know, from halfway across the world back to the west. How would you feel if you finally got to your destination and your luggage didn't show up? <sighs> Imagine. Finally reaching the, the day of judgment and your luggage is not there. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine that. You got no place to go. You're not going to be able to enjoy it. You're only going to have regret. I should have put more in my what? You guys don't travel too much. You should have put more in your carry on. There you go. Should have at least put in my carry on. But I didn't. Because I didn't prepare accordingly. That is taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who have taqwa.